whether um, I keep the body clean and clear of everything that is destructive, maybe it's not interested, it's interested because of the value it places on our body. After all, the body is the creation of God. And when it gets sick, it's interested that the reason he has included the promise of healing and the performance of that healing in the covenant he has made. Look at this in Deuteronomy chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 12. It says, Wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God. You are born again, the Lord thy God. You have given your heart to him, the Lord thy God. You have chosen the way of righteousness and the way of life is the Lord thy God. If you are not born again, yes, it's your creator, but it's not your redeemer. It's your creator, but it's not the Lord thy God. Because you are going to live far away on the other side if you die as a sinner. But when you give your heart to the Lord, he goes to prepare a place for you. He says, he belongs to me and he will live with me forever. So is the Lord thy God. And it says that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which is swear unto thy fathers. What's the covenant? What do we have in the covenant? Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. How many kinds of sicknesses? How many? All sickness and will put them, will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee. But it will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Look at Psalm 89, reading from verse 34. In Psalm 89, verse 34, my covenant will I not break. If there's any uh, thing broken in the covenant, it's not your side, it's your side. That you're looking away the other direction and you're not keeping to the terms of the covenant. It says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my leaves. It said, did I say I will heal? Did I say I will not put any disease upon you which you find upon the Egyptians? Did I say that you will not have the diseases of the world on you? Yes, that's my promise promise and that's my covenant and my covenant will I not break nor alter the sin that has gone out of my lips. Verse 35, in verse 35 it says, once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. Somebody say amen. amen. What's your name? Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto mention your name now he will not lie to you the promise he has made is there every time and if you go to God in prayer and you say here am I what's your name you mention your name why are you here I belong to God, I'm born again I'm a child of God and I know you will not lie unto me Disease will not be in my body. Lord, heal me. Healing will come immediately. We're looking at Psalm. We're looking at uh, Exodus chapter 15. Uh, and we're reading from verse 26. Exodus 15. Uh, we're looking at verse 26. And said, if thou wilt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, I will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. 
Amen. Is the Lord, it will kill you in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look here at Psalm 103. Psalm 103, we're reading from verse 1. Psalm 103, verse 1, it says in Psalm 103, reading from verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, the soul that is pardoned, not having guilt, not having condemnation, not having confusion, not having negative, negative thoughts, can easily praise the Lord. That soul is positive. That soul is passionate. And that soul is praising the Lord every time. And because this psalmist now has been pardoned, has been purged, has been purified, has been cleansed, and has been converted, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Then in verse 2, it says, In verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. In verse 3, it says, Who forget? Give it all thine iniquities and heal it all thy diseases. That's what he will do for you. Amen. All diseases, all infirmities, everything gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, he tells us about the mercy of the Lord and the covenant of the Lord. It says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. What he did for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and what he did for David, and Samuel, and Jeremiah, the rest of them, what he did in Isaiah, and what he did in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, it says the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. Upon them that honor him, upon them that reverence him, upon them that by action, by lifestyle, they hallow his name and his righteousness unto children's children. Look at verse 18, in verse 18, to such as keep his covenant. He forgives, he heals. He brightens your life. He renews your life like that of the eagle. For those that keep his covenant and to remember that his commandment and to remember his covenant and to do them. Look at Psalm 105. I'm reading from verse 8. In Psalm 105 verse 8, he has remembered his covenant forever. And the end of the world has not come yet. This is part of that forever. And he has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath were unto Isaac. Verse 10. In verse 10 he says, and he confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel Israel for an everlasting covenant. Look at verse 37. Here is part of the covenant, and he remembers that forever and ever he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. I need a good, good amen there. That Think about, think about this, that all our branches, all our groups, all our churches, local churches, in every local government, in every region, in every state, think about all our members, in all the churches everywhere. If we could say the same thing, that we come into covenant relationship with the Lord and the boys and girls and the teenagers and the young people and the young professionals and the fathers and the mothers and the bachelors and the spinsters, everyone, if we can say there was not one feeble person among their tribes. It will happen. God is a faithful God and God is a God who fulfills promises when we love him and when we honor him with our obedience, our soul, our mind, our heart. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. And we're reading here from verse 4. It says, Surely he hath 
upon our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5, in verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. If we all together, if we're healed, I am healed. With his tribes, I am healed. The Lord confirmed that in every life in Jesus' name. We're coming to Matthew chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 16. It says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits. He cast out the spirits with what? With his word. And healed how many? All that were sick. Look at, look at this. They brought unto him all that were sick and possessed with devils. Now he wants to pray. And somebody goes apart. And Peter goes to him and says, the Lord is going to pray now. The fellow, and then Peter said, why are you standing alone by yourself? No, I'm not. I don't want prayer in the crowd. You are his disciple, apostle, take me to him, personal. If he can deal with my case personally, I'll be all right. How about this one he wants to do for everybody? Uh -uh, that's for them. You see, there are people that they do not understand, that they don't have to have a personal, individual, isolated touch. That, that same prayer must reach you today. Whatever is the challenge in your life, he brings healing. It's part of the covenant. It's part of what he has said he will do. So you don't have to, you know, go apart and say, no, that one is not for me. When he finishes, moderator, group pastor, tell him his daughter is waiting here and crying here. How about this prayer now? I say you tell him. He knows me. He knows my name. I'm his daughter. I'm his son. Why don't we obey the scriptures? They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all. Praise the Lord is coming your way today. Yeah. Healed all that were sick. You know, that, that's the way we've done it every time because that follows the pattern of Jesus. The Lord will do it for you. Yeah. Many years ago, some years ago, some time ago, when I said many years ago, I think it's long, long ago, we went to South Africa. And that night, I was not the person preaching. It was another person preaching. And all of a sudden, the light went up. He didn't even have light, electric light, to do his preaching. And he had candles in their hands. And I was there because I didn't have any program that night. And, you know, our overseer said, they have a meeting this way to know what South Africa looks like and how they have their meetings. Can we go? So of course, we can go. And so we were there. Somebody preached. And the fellow that preached then just told the people, he didn't tell me ahead of time, he just told the people, uh, Pastor Kumoyi is here today and I've given you the word, he will come and pray for you now. I thought, look at this one, why didn't he tell me before, you know, beforehand? But you know, the power will always be with you. The anointing will always abide in your life. Our overseer that followed me that 
they will remember what I'm saying now as he hears this, you know, preaching going on. I think it's a way to part of, uh, uh, part of uh, Johannesburg or so. And then I got up there and I said, you know, somebody there, he should have gone for operation. Actually, he came from America because, uh, you know, his father is a writer of a popular book that Christians read almost in every country. And he came to survey South Africa so that um, they will see how to establish their work, their ministry in South Africa. He was in the meeting that night. And then I said that person there uh, that has this problem in the hand, you should have taken that problem for operation, but you are afraid. Raise up your hand and you're going to be healed now. I wasn't prepared for that. And then I prayed and immediately, instantaneously, he was healed that night he called his father in America I said daddy something has happened he was afraid to go for operation because his senior sister had gone for similar operation before and had problem and challenges because of that he was afraid but it was a visible kind of uh, difficulty and challenge in the hand healed completely he called the father and then mentioned my name so the father got interested and you know i was in america and then he happened to be in the hotel where i was and he just met me and he said are you pastor so and so i said yes i am he said my son got a miracle in your meeting in south africa and uh, from that time uh, they now invited me into the programs they were having and the Lord has been walking. If the Lord can walk like that, that night, you today, you got it in Jesus' name. And so still in South Africa, we were there and, um, you know, a pastor, a black, um, you know, black man like myself now, uh, he, they had a challenge in their church. These twins, uh, you know, twins, uh, maybe boy and girl or whatever, it, they were having spiritual problem. That the twins will have a personality. They will not see the personality. He'll be cutting them with bleach and will be uh, pinching them with uh, pins. And everybody could see the mark. They didn't see the hands doing it, but they saw all the marks, everything. And when it's freshly done, they see the blood coming out. And the children, those two, they'll be crying. And they didn't know what to do. It was a spiritual problem. And I happened to be in South Africa at that time. And then they called me and they said, uh, you know, these twins have uh, this problem while ministering in their church uh, that night. And, uh, you know, I prayed for those twins. And I said, those evil spirits and evil powers uh, tormenting the children tonight at uh, the last night. Don't come here. Don't touch them anymore. Finished. I want somebody to shout, finished. And then the following day, the pastor was so excited. Those simple spirits, pinching them, cutting them like that, that was the end of it. And I say that this year, and this January, all those tormenting spirits and tormenting powers in your life, finish in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17 here. In verse 17, it tells us, it said that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses gone from your life gone from your parents gone from your children gone you will not lose your wife prematurely and you will not lose your husband prematurely gone in Jesus name first Peter chapter 2 verse 24. In First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body 
on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. Point number three now. Point number three, the crucial holiness in the holy covenant. Crucial, essential, important, indispensable. Nothing, nothing is not a thing you can do without. You cannot do without this. It's a crucial, essential, important, indispensable holiness in the holy covenant in luke chapter 1 reading from verse 72 luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant verse 73 the oath which is where to our father abraham 74 it says that he will grant unto us unto me unto me that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear no enemy will stop your progress that dream the Lord had given you. No enemy will stop it or frustrate it in Jesus' name. That he might deliver us from our enemies and that will serve him without fear. Somebody say amen. amen. Many things in our lives we have the calling to do. I'll do this, I'll do this. Sometimes it's a dream, a vision, a project you had had from your younger days. And I also want to move on and get that done. Fear. And people say, what's he trying to do? We who came before you have not done that. You want to do that. How can? Other people say, where are you going to get the resources? And because you fear you might not have the resources, then you settle for a lower thing. I know I cannot do that. Why not? Why not? Those who are doing it, what do they have? If they are Christians, they have God, you have God. And so this year, you will fear nothing in Jesus' name. Some people remain in that little box where circumstances of life have boxed them up and they cannot break the bonds, shatter all the things that bind them and they remain there in that box. You'll come out of that box. There are things that can only be done outside that little box where you are. There are things that can only be done outside the comfort zone where you are. But fear will not allow people to come out of the comfort zone. I've never done that before. I've never faced an enemy like that before. I've never faced an opposition like that before. And so they remain where they were. And they carry that old heart, old concept. They don't believe that their progress depends on God, God alone, the covenanter, and them, the covenantee. They believe that although God promises this, although God promises that, but this enemy is so greater, more powerful than God, even if God wanted me to, if they don't want me to, what can I do? That's the problem, the fear of man. They are coming out of that this year. It says that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. Your helpers will come. The finance will come. Your protection is secured. Your life will be long enough to fulfill that dream in Jesus' name. Cast out the fear out of your mind. You will get there. 
Look at verse 75. In verse 75, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Can we be holy today? If we have the grace today, can we have the same grace tomorrow? Can we have the grace the following day? Can we be holy for one week? Yeah. Can we be holy for one month? The grace we enjoyed one day, three days, one week, one month. Can we enjoy the grace for the next month? And so, if one will say a lifetime, a lifetime is one day at a time. And so, a life of holiness is holiness one day at a time. A day of a day of faith and a day of progress is uh, you know a life of progress is progress one day at a time. A day of faithfulness, a life of uh, faithfulness and fearlessness is one fearless day at a time. You don't need to worry about tomorrow, about next week, about next year. One day at a time, you live without fear. One day at a time, you live above and beyond all your enemies. Why are you saying amen like you don't know? One day at a time. One day at a time. Over there, the right one step at a time. And if you can have, that's what I'm reading before me there, if you can have one step at a time, one day at a time, holiness will be the lot of your life. Uh, we're coming to Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Gozar died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Then in verse 2, in verse 2 it says, Above its two, the seraphims, each one had six wings, and with, uh, with twain, he covered his face and were twain he covered his feet and were twain he did fly verse 3 and in verse 3 it says and one cried to another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is uh, is full of thy glory in verse 4 he tells us and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and uh, the house was filled with smoke. Then in verse 5, uh, here comes I say, and then said, I woe is me, for I am, I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, the Lord will cleanse your lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of and then in verse 6 it says, And then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a light coal in his hand, which he had taken uh, with tongues from up the altar. Then in verse 7 it says, And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. The Lord will touch your lips, will touch your tongue will touch your heart and then it says and thine iniquity is taken away he had been a prophet and god cannot use a sinner who had not been converted as his prophet as his mouthpiece he was saved but now when he saw the glory of god and the holiness of god he cried unto the lord he said that original lip original nature original language is still here with me and i dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips and then god commanded and the angel came and took a coal live coal and touched his leaves and said your iniquity is taken away it was done for him it will be done for you and thy sin purged and then in verse 8 the Lord said also I had the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us then said I here am I 
here am I. Converted, here am I. Consecrated, here am I. Cleansed, here am I. Purified and purged, here am I. I forget the old life of uselessness. I come now, this year will be a profitable year. All around in your life, serving God, serving, the, serving in the church, serving outside the church, serving everywhere, you can come and say, Lord, cleanse me, Lord, purge me, Lord, purify me, Lord, take the Adamic nature away, change my view, change my language, change everything within me. Here I am now available, here am I, send me, and the Lord will use you mightily this year in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 35, we're looking at